Incoming time flux. is a complex piece of machinery and balance must be maintained one change requires another how would you propose i keep the balance will you help me save barry and kara or not no but i will give you the means to save them tell me what you need in exchange whatever the multiverse requires to survive the crisis that is looming when it is time Okay. So what bargain have I made? What does the multiverse require? You assist me as we seek to prevent the inevitable. That, that sounds impossible. The multiverse is more complex than you could fathom. What are you not telling me? I've seen your future, Oliver. Inexorable and unavoidable. I have watched you die. During this crisis. I am truly sorry. No. You are not taking him. Oliver. I'm not here to bring harm to you or your daughter. Trust me, the world needs her. You think that I'm just going to let you leave here with my husband's life? This is bigger than us, than all of us. Why does it always have to be you? I cannot prevent his passing, but he can prevent the death of countless more, including you and your daughter. But he needs to come with me tonight. Hi everyone, it's Charlie, so we gotta talk about the Flash Season 6 teaser, all the post credit scenes for Crisis on Infinite Earths on all the Arrowverse shows, Arrow Season 7 finale, the Legends finale, the Supergirl finale, so the odds that you watch every single one of these shows is pretty low. There's actually a pretty small audience that just watches everything. You may just watch one or two of the TV shows. So I'll explain everything that's going on and how they're gonna do the crossover this year. It's gonna be five parts instead of doing three or four parts like they've done in previous seasons. So it's gonna be way bigger and they're breaking it into two different parts. One will start in December like the normal crossovers do and then the second part will be in January when all the shows come back. And it's all about the end of Arrow, Arrow's final season. So obviously we're all expecting Oliver to be the one to die instead of Barry because of this bargain that he made with the Monitor. And that gets into the Arrow post credit scene. I didn't include everything from the Arrow scene, so I'll explain the Felicity part of that too at the very end of the episode. But if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the DC Easter egg videos. There's going to be a bunch of big stuff coming this fall. We have Batman, Deathstroke, Ravager, and Superboy coming to Titan. So there's a bunch of DC Universe stuff happening separately, but that's all separate universe from the Arrowverse stuff. We'll do a new round of the giveaway for the DC Universe subscription. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment about one of the Crisis episodes on the video. Side note too, I've already seen the first episode of Swamp Thing. I'm allowed to do a non-spoilery video this Friday, so we'll be talking about Swamp Thing later this week. First big scene, the Flash season 6 post credit scene. So obviously, they changed the timeline, reverse Flash got Nora to make a whole bunch of changes, erasing herself but allowing him to escape from prison. He tells Barry, see you at the next crisis, because he's from the future, he knows how Flash vanishes in Crisis on Infinite Earths, but he might not know about every single change that just happened. So the wrench in his plan might have something to do with what Oliver is doing with the Monitor. That's sort of the new thing that's throwing a wrinkle into all this. But in present day, the only thing that has changed about Crisis is that the future newspaper date has rolled back to the date of this year's crossover. It's still happening during 2019. So whoever vanishes, Arrow or The Flash, still happens at the end of this year. 
You know what that probably means. There's going to be a huge cliffhanger. One of the heroes will die during the big third act climax. Then they'll have an epilogue, probably for Oliver, when the second part comes back in January. Don't forget, too, there's only 10 episodes in the final season of Arrow. And it sounds like, based on the monitor grabbing him, saying that the multiverse needs you right now. We need to start right now. That all of the episodes of Arrow season 8 will be crisis episodes. If you have not been watching Arrow, they've been doing flash forwards this year with a future version of Roy, future version of the heroes. Oliver's daughter and Connor Hawk, who's sort of like the future team Arrow, will probably get more of them coming back too. So it won't just be Crisis on Infinite Earths. They'll find a way to sort of tease what happens before it actually happens using those flash forwards. During the Arrow finale post credit scene, Oliver is sitting there after his baby Mia has been born. The monitor shows up. This is a couple months after the end of the events of the Arrow finale. They dealt with that in the first half of the episode. Then the second half of the episode was all this crisis stuff that they were setting up. He shows up and says, we need to go right now, dude. Multiverse has fallen down all over the place. That bargain you made? Yeah, we need to do whatever the multiverse requires. So he doesn't say exactly what Oliver needs to do, but I think it's implied ultimately it will mean him sacrificing his life so that Barry and Kara can live. They even did the flashback to show you a longer version of that bargain scene that he made during last year's crossover. So that's happening in present day. So while the present day of Flash season six and all the other shows are happening, they have the regular plots. Oliver will be off traversing the multiverse, doing all of his stuff, trying to get ready for crisis. There was another scene with the monitor in an old version of Felicity in the future that I did not include in this video. So what happens is, is that after they sort of save the city in the future, the future Team Arrow has officially taken over for original Team Arrow. Felicity says goodbye to her children, to Mia, natural born daughter, and to William, her stepson. They meet at Oliver's grave, then she summons the monitor who takes her into the afterlife to be with Oliver again. So just more evidence that he dies during Crisis on Infinite Earths, but just remember that the afterlife in the DC comic book universe is different from the afterlife in other TV show universes. So just because he dies during the crossover doesn't mean that other alternate universe versions of Oliver can't come back so Stephen Amell can guest star in future crossovers, or they could always bring back Force Ghost Oliver during future crossovers to be part of whatever they do in future seasons, as long as the Arrowverse continues to be a thing. Think of him as the Yoda of the Arrowverse going forward. Ah, young Skywalker, Barry Allen, how I have missed you. There was a Legends of Tomorrow scene where the Monitor shows up in the background. He doesn't do anything. He's just sitting there watching their show, eating some popcorn with the Book of Destiny to remind you who he is and that he was a big part of the crossover last year. Because last year, Legends did not do the crossover. They made a joke about that during the Legends finale, but he didn't really have any big scene during the Legends episode, so don't worry about that. But the Legends will be part of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Remember, they're doing a five-part crossover, so it's all five shows. It's Flash, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, Supergirl, and the Batwoman TV show. Don't really know what Batwoman is going to be doing during the crossover. We'll find out about that later this year. The Supergirl post credit scene is a little more interesting because it's the Monitor collecting a couple of really big, powerful villains, and it seems like he's either going to make them work with the heroes to save the multiverse, or if this is a different version of the Monitor, a rogue Monitor, and he's working against the multiverse, then he's using them to destroy it or do something crazy. But it seems like, unless we get some more information, that it's the same Monitor and he's going to make them work with the heroes. Even if you're not sure who Martian Manhunter's evil brother is, you probably picked up from this scene that he's coming for him to get revenge for locking him up for all these years. If you're not a big comic book reader, Martian Manhunter has an evil brother named Ma'ala Fok who tried to release this really crazy bio agent harming a whole bunch of their people. Martian Manhunter defeated him and locked him up in an interdimensional prison. So the Monitor, using his crazy level of power is releasing him saying I need you to get revenge on your brother but they'll also probably need him to do something as part of this big crisis crossover too. Part of the reason for doing that I think from a story perspective is, is because Martian Manhunter is a character is so overpowered that he becomes a big problem for stories because he's basically as strong as Supergirl but he can also phase everything and he's telepathic and he's ancient so he has way more fighting in battle experience than someone say like Supergirl who's also super powerful but you need somebody who's capable of fighting Martian Manhunter who has abilities that are as powerful as his. So that's really why you bring in an evil brother who has the exact same abilities. Reverse Flash kind of seems like he's his own agent of chaos in all of this. Obviously, he's just trying to manipulate things to his own benefit. 
It was the teaser in Nora's future newspaper that says Reverse Flash leading army of shadow demons. A lot of people are like, are those time rays? Are those the shadow demons that are referred to in the newspaper? That's always possible that that's who they are, but because they're changing so much from the comics about Crisis on Infinite Earths, it's hard to say whether or not the Anti-Monitor will be the real main villain or if it'll be some other person. Because you remember, the Monitors are basically gods respective to the other characters in the DC Universe. So don't forget that there are many monitors living in the multiverse. The one that we've been seeing is just one of them, so it's possible that we see some of the other monitors flying around, but I'm guessing that for the most part we'll just be following this one. What'll probably happen is, is that when they do the Comic-Con trailers for all the TV shows like the Flash Comic-Con trailer, the Arrow Final Season Comic-Con trailer, they'll have some way of teasing Crisis on Infinite Earths during those because they're spending so much time building up to this huge, huge crossover. I'm not really planning on doing Batwoman videos this fall for that TV show. I'll be doing Titans videos, and if you're a big Batman fan, you'd rather see Batman than see Batwoman. He's going to be on Titans Season 2, played by Jorah Mormont from Game of Thrones. But Batwoman is going to be airing back-to-back -back with Supergirl on Sunday nights. So if you're a Supergirl person and you really like that show, they're making Batwoman for you. But my Sunday night show this fall, starting in November, is basically going to be Rick and Morty Season 4. So I'll be busy doing videos for that instead of doing Batwoman videos. I feel like everybody will probably be okay with that. We also have the Star Wars Mandalorian TV series, The Witcher Netflix TV series, and a whole bunch of other really big stuff that's starting later this year, the Disney Plus streaming service. So I'll just remind everyone when they drop footage. No worries. There's a lot of really cool stuff coming up. While you wait for everything, click here for all my Avengers Endgame, Easter Eggs, and Spider-Man Far From Home trailer videos, and click here for my Game of Thrones finale video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.